The youths of today are quickly adapting to the digital era. With soft hands and minuscule attention spans, the last thing we're cut out to be doing is yard work. Why should I be stuck out here in the hot sun when I really should be hanging out with all my best friends at a pool party in the metaverse? So as a classic millennial move, I decided that instead of mowing my lawn, I would just make a YouTube video about building a robot that mows it for me. Every great inventor knows that step one is to think outside the box. The obvious approach to cutting the grass is to use spinning blades, but I had already tried that when I put four drone motors with X-Acto knives onto an RC car. This is 2022, so I needed something more futuristic. And what is more futuristic than lasers? This is a 40 watt cutting laser that is designed to be used on CNC machines. But who says it can't cut grass too? It's clearly capable of it. Look at that, the grass stands no chance. The problem is that the focal point is only about 30 millimeters away from the laser, so anything farther than that won't get cut. But I found that shining the laser through an old camera lens would give me a much narrower beam. This is probably a good time to mention how incredibly dangerous this is. It's not going to cut your finger off or anything like that, but a direct hit to your eyeball, even just for a nanosecond, would make you blind for the rest of your life. For comparison, those green laser pointers where you can see the beam in the air are only 5 milliwatts. This laser is 8,000 times more powerful, so it's definitely something to be cautious around. Always wear laser glasses, and better yet, just don't try this at home. Or anywhere for that matter. This laser obviously isn't going to cut much grass if it's just sitting there, so we need to build a device that will pivot it back and forth. I 3D printed a big herringbone gear that the laser would attach to. It holds two bearings that allow it to spin nice and smoothly. In the middle, it has a slip ring that routes power through to the laser so it can spin 360 degrees without wires getting twisted up. I later realized that spinning it 360 degrees would just be too dangerous, so the slip ring really isn't needed, but it's there anyways. The gear assembly mounts onto a base plate which also holds a continuous rotation servo with a pinion gear on it. Here it is all assembled. Upon powering up the servo, I realized that even on its slowest setting it still spins way too fast for the laser to have enough time to cut the grass. So I ditched the servo and connected a little stepper motor with an Arduino and potentiometer on it that could be used to adjust the speed. As you can see, it's now capable of spinning really, really slow. This should be perfect, so it was time to start cutting the grass. On the first few attempts, it was still moving too fast and didn't really do much cutting. On the third attempt, I slowed it way down and let it run for a really long time. And this seemed to work. Pretty incredible. On a side note, I did all these tests with the laser cutting into grass with a slight hill behind it, so there was no chance of the beam shooting through the foliage and hitting someone in the eye. I also had an accelerometer mounted on the laser that would turn it off if a raccoon or something like that tipped it over. That way it would never shine on anything above the horizon line. After several days, the lawn was looking quite flat, and as you can see, this was much more than just wimpy blades of grass. There were thick weeds, moss, and all sorts of gnarly stuff in there. By the end of it, the laser had leveled quite a large area. Here's the before shot, and after. I was quite impressed. Then, to test out how much useful range this thing had, I reduced the pivot angle to only a few degrees so that it would cut further faster. Unfortunately, it didn't really do much at this distance because the beam was diverging quite a bit and it didn't have as much cutting power. Moving on to the next area. In these time lapses, you can clearly see one of the big issues with this idea, and that is that all the cut foliage just falls into the beam and gives it more to cut. This makes it take way longer than it should to get through a meaningful amount of grass. So then I started clearing some of the clippings by hand to help it cut further. If you're wondering how on earth I didn't start a fire, it's because this was done during springtime in the Pacific Northwest, where it rains just about every day. You really couldn't start a fire in this grass if you tried. And trust me, I did. Look at this, it was going right down to the ground here. Like that is, that is dirt or moss or something right there. Oh, I put my hand in it, oops. Yeah, we're starting to just burn into the ground. <laughs> I need to elevate the laser a little bit. So I'm gonna shove this rock under here a little bit and pop that sucker up. We'll see if that allows it to cut deeper. For a better idea of how powerful this laser is, I'd say it's pretty comparable to a magnifying glass in the sun. Without the camera lens, the beam is much narrower and hotter, but with the camera lens, I'd say it's pretty similar to a magnifying glass. Looking through the laser glasses, you can see it slowly burn through this leaf. You can also see how the stepper motor kind of ticks like a clock. I had it set to do 1 16th steps here, and this stepper motor already had its own internal gear reduction, so it was moving really slow. After propping up the laser a few degrees, it was able to cut pretty far, probably 6 to 8 feet into the grass. This was over the course of about a week. Here's one final setup with this laser. I had it cutting into some flowers, and it really seemed to work quite well. A perfectly flat surface of grass, down to the atom. Can't do that with a regular lawnmower. So now that we have a good idea of what this laser is capable of, let's try something a bit different. This is a high power laser array. 
It's basically just 24 smaller laser diodes packed together with a bunch of small lenses on top. I mounted it to a Stratus LED's air module. This typically has a 120 watt LED on it, but I took that off and replaced it with the laser array. The LumiBoost LED driver that is built into the air module actually works great for driving the laser array. I just had to adjust a few settings like the max output current, which can be done over USB. Initially, I had it configured to do 80 watts at full throttle, but over time that seemed to creep up to 120 watts, probably from thermal damage after running it continuously for several weeks. Looking through the laser goggles, we can see the beam is a square, and as we get further away from the array, it gets larger and larger. After some experimentation, I found that shining it through a few big lenses caused the beam to converge into a smaller point about 5 feet away, so that should increase the cutting power quite a bit. The fact that the beam diverges more quickly makes it a little safer too, because if it hits someone at a super far distance, it will be less powerful. But don't get me wrong, this thing is still insanely dangerous. Even just the stray reflections coming off the lens could blind you. I mounted the whole assembly to a similar pivot mechanism as before, and with that it was ready to cut some grass. I let this thing run rain or shine. It didn't seem to make much of a difference in performance. So with the wider beam, this one obviously doesn't have as much acute cutting power, but since it's really wide, it does just heat up more of the grass for longer. So maybe it'll end up working better. We'll see. I let it run for a few days, and slowly but surely, it leveled out the grass. This one seems like it might have cut far enough as to where the laser is now starting to exit its optimal focal point and get a little bit larger of a beam over on that side, so we'll see if it keeps cutting through the rest of these flowers. Unfortunately, it still had the problem of the cut grass falling into the beam and stealing all the energy away from cutting new grass. But despite this, it still seemed to be just about as effective as the narrow laser. Instead of physically cutting through the grass as much, it seemed to be kind of more like just cooking the grass and making it wilt over. That's not to say there wasn't still quite a bit of cutting going on here, because as you can see, there's a lot of charred bits lying around. I was quite impressed. For this next setup, I had it cut through some horsetail weeds. It wouldn't cut very far at all when these would fall into the beam, because they were super thick. It sure does make a lot of smoke, or maybe steam. Tough to say, but yeah, this one didn't cut very far. Next up, I found some nice long grass blades and let it run for a few days. In the time lapse, where you see the grass wilting, that's because of rain weighing it down, just in case anyone was wondering. This time around, it worked really well. I was amazed at how flat the plateau of grass was, just like a putting green, only much more high tech. So far, all of these devices have been aimed at cutting the grass. But what if you don't want any grass at all and would rather just burn everything? For this, I designed a tilt axis. Here it is, shown with an air module on board. But basically, it would allow the laser to move in two axes instead of just one. I mounted it on the pan mechanism and attached the laser array module. Since adding an extra axis is clearly more dangerous, I clipped the gears so that it physically would not be able to rotate past a certain amount. I did this for both pan and tilt. For the first test, I decided to try and paint an entire piece of cardboard black by charring the front, but as you can see, I had the laser turned up a bit too bright. Whoopsies. Then I tried it again with some wood, and it seemed to work great. After that, it was time to annihilate some grass. This design took extra long because I had to complete quite a few pan passes before completing a full tilt cycle, but eventually it seemed to do its job, which is to have no mercy and burn everything. But don't worry all you insect lovers out there, it moved so slowly that bugs had plenty of time to get out of the way. One week it was raining super hard, so I built a full enclosure for it, which also made it a lot safer. Safer, but still not very safe in general. Here's a before shot, and an after shot. Some spots were super charred. You get a nice curve in the grass blades right there, as the laser was going right over the top of them. Yep, that looks uh, pretty managed. For all these tests, I powered the laser with the EcoFlow Delta Max, which is the sponsor of this video. The Delta Max is a high capacity, 2016 watt hour battery bank with a high power inverter that can power almost any appliance out there. Want to power a 1200 watt microwave in the mountains? No problem, because the Delta Max can output up to 3400 watts with its X-Boost technology. So you could even power two microwaves if you wanted. 1250 watts! Wow! wow. so many watts! Oh, oh, wow. A little grass on there, but... No, it's perfect. Oh boy! Mm. Nom 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 nom! Mmm, who doesn't love cheesy chips in the mountains? They really taste so much better there. Let's say you want to cut off Colin's dreadlocks at the beach. No problem, the Delta Max has you covered. I'm really grateful that I can get my hair cut <laughs> out on this beach. Come here, come here and look at this. Oh this is just God. like a big matted dread right here. Oh, it's like a pancake God. dreadlock full of brake fluid and pine needles. You look the same from the front, now let's see about the back. <laughs> it could power this trimmer for like 200 hours on a single charge. Pretty impressive if you ask me. 
and look how good Colin looks. Thanks, EcoFlow. You can charge the Delta Max via their foldable solar panel, and you can even link multiple solar panels together and charge at up to 800 watts. When you're back at home, you can plug it into a standard AC outlet and charge at 1800 watts. That's seriously fast. It only takes 1.8 hours for a full charge on AC power, but it can charge even faster on AC and solar simultaneously. If you need extra capacity, EcoFlow offers the Delta Max Smart Extra Battery. This expands the battery capacity by over 6,000 watt hours, so you can power even more appliances for even longer. There's even an EcoFlow app that you can use to monitor the battery's performance and change settings all through your phone. Check out the link in the description for more info, and thanks again to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. As a safety test, to make sure the laser wasn't going to light the grass on fire, we tried lighting it with a blowtorch, but it would just put itself out even in the dry, dead grass that the laser had already scorched. Okay, see if it keeps going now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> see wow. if it keeps going. That is intense. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna keep going. So now I moved it forward a bit, and I'm gonna see how it does with foliage control. No surprises here, it burns the leaves. Wow, so incredible. But hey, for all I know, this could have been the first bush ever trimmed by a laser. True innovation right there. So here's our before shot and after. I would say that worked pretty well. It made a nice hole in the bush. After that, I shot it into some weeds and vines. Some of the leaves were really thick and waxy, so the laser didn't really cut through them. It just kind of turned them brown. Here's a before shot and after. Nice and crispy. Very good. So this has been cool and all, but what good is it if it can only cut a semicircle of grass at a time? The laser really needs to be moved forward a slight amount after every pass so that it can cover more area. So I set out to find a robot that would be kind enough to do that for me. The Snowcat kit that I did a Kickstarter campaign for seemed perfect, but the problem is it's kind of designed for high speed driving and doesn't have the low speed fidelity needed for grass cutting. But I figured with some slight modifications it just might work. First off, I tried replacing the ESCs with VESC motor drives that used field oriented control and a rotation sensor for smoother starts. With these, it was able to drive pretty slowly, but I still felt like it needed to go even slower and have more torque, so I ended up designing these gearboxes with one additional stage. The reduction ratio went from 17 to 1 to 47 to 1. I also added smaller drive wheels to reduce the ratio even further. It now seemed pretty dang slow, which was perfect. I'll make a video in the future about the rest of these modifications, but for now, let's put a laser on it. Instead of having the laser pan back and forth, I wanted to have it slide back and forth. This was so it would be able to use the narrower laser with no lenses attached. At its optimal focal point of about 3 centimeters, it can cut grass very quickly, so I figured it would be the best option. This x-axis from a cheap CNC machine seemed like it might be a good slider mechanism, but it was too short and I was having some problems with the screws, so I ended up designing my own. I 3D printed some big brackets on my new Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus 3D printer. Big thanks to Creality for hooking a brother up. These parts are for joining a bunch of 2020 aluminum extrusion together, which is what my new big slider was made of. It was controlled by an Arduino with the limit switch on one end, and once that was pressed, it would count the number of steps in the opposite direction and reverse once it got to the end. I probably spent about 6 hours writing the code that allowed it to use only one limit switch instead of two. Great use of time. I'm pretty bad at programming. But anyways, the laser was mounted on the slider and I set it up in the yard for a static test. Hmm, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's really doing all that much, but hopefully it works better on the rover. So then I mounted the slider on the rover and installed another Arduino that plugged directly into the VESC motor drives. This Arduino would tell the rover to drive forward a certain amount every time the limit switch on the laser slider was triggered. But wait, there's more. I wanted to make a vacuum to suck the grass blades upright for the laser to cut through them. This seemed like a great opportunity to try out my new resin printer for making a turbo impeller, so I fired up the Anycubic Photon M3 Plus and it got to work. A few hours later, I had an impeller and a housing. Oh boy, does resin printing smell bad, but it's also so precise, but so smelly, but so precise. Ah, the compromise. After getting all the parts cleaned up, I installed a 2700 kV brushless motor in the impeller and screwed that onto an FDM printed plate. The resin printed housing fit on over that. This thing seemed to suck pretty well, so then it was time to make a cyclone separator to collect the grass blades. I 3D printed the cyclone all in one piece on my only 3D printer that I actually paid for, and then cut a hole in a peanut butter jar lid that would be used to collect everything that it sucked up. I then CNC cut a clear acrylic lid for the cyclone on my Stepcraft M1000 CNC machine and attached that to the top. This way we can see all the stuff spinning around. Once the whole vacuum assembly was finished, I installed it on the back of the rover and ran a tube to the front where it would pretty much just sit there and do nothing because it was actually way too noisy to use. But I did do one test to see if it would have worked. Currently the peanut butter jar has nothing in it and we'll see how much grass it collects.
<laughs> it's so loud. That is absurd. That tube gets into an aerodynamic resonance and it starts to bugle. It sounds like a dying elk. It's pretty warm. I wonder if I'm overpropping this motor. Something smells like it's really, oh my god, okay. Yeah, well I think I found the problem here. These screws are so hot, so that motor, I think I'm toasting that motor. Well, it was only on for about a minute, but let's see if we collected any grass. Uh, no, but we collected a weird six-legged spider. So that was pretty lame. I think there just weren't enough grass blades being cut for the vacuum to suck up. In order to test if this cyclone separator actually works or not, I tested it out with some sawdust. Focus your attention here to the peanut butter jar and notice how quickly it's filling up. Pay no attention to the turbine and how much dust it's spewing out. The tiniest particles still make it through the cyclone and blow out the fan, but that's alright. Out of sight, out of mind, that's what I always say. Pretty impressive, especially for some 3D printed parts. It worked great until you try to suck up too much at once, and then it clogs. But as long as you don't try and suck up too much, it's pretty effective. Here's a shot looking down into the cyclone. Look at it go, so amazing. Now I'm gonna see if this impeller can actually handle full throttle. I don't think I've ever gone over like a third throttle or maybe half throttle. Jeez, that thing absolutely disintegrated. I can't believe that, that, re that resin is pretty brittle. Nuts, I gotta clean up all these parts now. That was a fun little tangent, but now let's get back to the laser. One of the things you'll notice is that I mounted the slider offset to one side of the rover. This is so that we would be able to see a difference between the grass that it actually cuts and the grass that it cuts and then just smashes down by driving over. The speed was adjustable, but most of the time I had it driving about 2 meters per day, or 0.0001022727 miles per hour. Since the rover only drives forward when the limit switch is pressed, the speed is controlled not by how fast the motor spins, but instead by how long it spins for. This was all done by the little Arduino on board. You can see that I have a power cable behind it. It runs off wall power instead of batteries, because the batteries would need to be super large to have enough capacity to drive the laser all day. Over the course of a week or so, I had the rover drive in several straight paths, and it seems to work pretty well. That grass is looking pretty mowed if you ask me. You can clearly see where it's driven and where it didn't, especially after the sun has had a chance to dry out all the clippings. Look at this, that's pretty nicely trimmed right there. Yeah, that works. After that, I turned the slider upside down and installed the laser array on top, pointing straight down. This obviously isn't going to do much grass cutting. It's more like grass toasting. Or you could even think about it as just turning up the sun extra hot. Maybe this is what would happen to all life on Earth when our atmosphere burns off and we get hit by direct, unfiltered sunlight. Or if the entire planet gets hit by an alien laser beam. Who knows? I let this run for several days and it definitely had a noticeable impact on the grass. I've had it on the absolute slowest setting and it's taken several days to go from here to here. <laughs> so it's going real slow, just creeping along. I also have a hunch that that laser might be outputting less power when it gets hot, because it is like 95 degrees outside right now and it doesn't seem to be doing as much damage as it used to do. All this stuff just looks dead, it doesn't really fall over, it just kind of shrivels up. So use the narrow laser if you want to cut your grass and then use the wide laser if you just want to gently crisp your grass. I would, I would play uh, some badminton on this, maybe some croquet. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. It looks like it kind of lit on fire right there, but that's okay. It's crunchy. That's one interesting feature, I would say. Love it. Love it. So we've explored multiple different ways of cutting the grass with a laser. And the big question is, will lasers be the future of lawn care? I think the obvious answer is yes. My new corporation will bring this product to market by next month. If you're a venture capitalist looking to make lots of money, I have great news for you. We are now accepting investors for this revolutionary new product. Please send all your money to my PayPal account immediately. Thanks for watching. Bye.